part of our commitments is to help customers transition, right? Um, and we have a big role to play in providing them the finance so that they can they can go ahead with that transition. That in turn will then help us reduce our emissions as well. So I see this as a great opportunity um, in supporting the customers and in turn supporting ourselves and the wider world. Um, it will be great to get your view. It just fits really well with our purpose-led strategy. How do, how do you make finance and banks uh, purpose-led. Um, and I think if we tie our strategy and ambition and action to climate change, we can really demonstrate that we are leading with purpose. And that purpose is to help our customers, uh, families, businesses, individuals, all realize their potential. Um, and it's really at the heart of the sort of intergenerational issues, which is why finance is a great way of addressing it because you can you can look at this over the long term uh, rather than just an immediate I intervention but you but you you run the uh the climate finance program supriya i mean you, you must see the way in which we mobilize finance how we link our targets to our actions w what what is it that sort of drives that uh, mobilization of finance do you think we're obviously starting to see the change in the balance sheet. We're obviously starting to see um, there's more demand. So we obviously have the climate and sustainable funding and financing target that was launched in 2020. And we initially thought that target of 20 billion would go up to three years, uh, but we actually managed to overachieve. So there's not only um, a push for it, there's also a pull. And that demand and supply is becoming quite clear as we start looking through uh, both from a balance sheet perspective, but obviously the customer conversations that they're having. Um, it's interesting, the link you mentioned about purpose, obviously climate is one of our three focus areas of our purpose. And it's actually made it very real internally as well. So it's not just about external conversations. You know, people we speak to, um, the linkage is becoming quite clear and, and how we manage ourselves, that purposeful thinking, thinking about stakeholders and future generations. So not just reducing our thinking to the shareholder or, um, you, know, you know, thinking about income and all that. Carbon has become a big conversation point internally, and that's really encouraging to see. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of the journey. And, and I almost see this as a little bit of an education and then a lot of execution that will be needed, uh, but it's a really interesting phase to be involved in. It was a big commitment to be the principal sponsor of the COP, um, but it was also a great opportunity to put ourselves at the heart of the conversation. And we were the only uh, banking sponsor for COP. Um, and I think uh, history will judge Glasgow uh, as a platform for climate action that builds on Paris. Paris set the framework, but the action will starts and will be driven as a result of the commitments made in Glasgow. Um, and to be in the room around some of those things was really fantastic. But Sapriya, you, you were very heavily involved in putting together the £100 uh, billion pound commitment to uh, climate and sustainable finance and funding. Um, and that got huge prominence at COP and in the run-up to the COP. As we've mentioned, purpose and climate is a big part of our purpose and, and the purposeful thinking that we are trying to live internally and then also demonstrate externally. Um, our climate strategy is built around helping our customers transition. Um, and obviously we announced uh, various initiatives along the way, uh, the 100 billion target uh, for climate and sustainable funding and financing um, is, is a big commitment in terms of supporting our customers um, and encouraging the transition to green. Um, and in terms of putting it together, I was actually really heartened that we went along to all our franchises and all the businesses um, and said we are working on this target and it's an opportunity to help customers. And it was they, they had a pipeline um, and they came up front with what they could commit, um, what they saw the customer demand to be uh, and the, how we could help customers transition. So what we have done is we have put together a criteria. So we have been quite strict on ourselves and our customers in terms of uh, which activities will become part of the 100 billion and be included in that. Um, and then we have said, okay, what is realistic in terms of our customer demand? How do we see the economy moving? How do we see our customers' journey moving? And then what, what is sensible to have um, as to develop that target? Um, and that's how the 100 billion was created. Um, and it, it is a big step forward for our journey as well as our customers' journey. So um, we, we are 
um, working towards that and obviously it will take a lot of customer conversations it will take a lot of drive from us internally uh, to support them um, and obviously it's not just about talking about transition we now have the tools to help the transition um, and that's where it becomes a full parcel um, rather than just being um, something we're talking about and i think it's great to see that journey happen um, and you know Obviously, I'll work on reporting the 100 billion and coming to everyone to say, okay, how much have you done uh, in terms of keeping us right and on track? Uh, but at least we have the starting point um, to work from. Yeah, and I, th I think the 100 billion has been a very powerful uh, influence in um, the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero as well. We've got a very prominent role uh, in that. Alison uh, chairs uh, one of the work streams around real economy transitions. Um, and it feels to me as though linking our money and our support to that real economy transition uh, is consistent with the uh, imperative that came out of COP, this need to really uh, accelerate climate action. Uh, and I think that comes together in a really nice way in terms of both our ambition, the role that we can play, but also how we can collaborate and galvanise others to come on this journey with us. We're obviously looking um, at our own uh, balance sheet to see um, how much carbon we have on our lending um, operations. Um, so there are certain industries and we're doing a lot of assessments for our clients as well um, to see which industries and sectors are carbon heavy. We have frameworks in place to assess um, the risk we are carrying from a carbon perspective um, and from a climate transition perspective. And on that basis, obviously, we've identified certain sectors to be um, higher risk uh, from a climate perspective. As I mentioned, our underlying journey is to support transition. But obviously that involves um, for certain industries to make difficult decisions as well. Um, so we have various opportunities like the 100 billion uh, target to support uh, climate and sustainable funding and financing, which will help customers transition. We're also looking at credible transition plans for our oil and gas major customers. Um, and once we have the outputs, then we would work with them um, to see how we can support transition. Um, James, you're obviously quite closely involved in the various conversations that are going on and the various governance that this involves, etc. So it will be quite interesting to hear your perspective. Well, I think I was really uh, delighted that we signed up to the Powering Pass Coal Alliance and we were able to make that commitment at COP26 in Glasgow. Um, and uh, we did that alongside um, many other uh, players, but to, to do it as well in the uh, plenary um, room on a on a on the big stage, I think was a, was a real career highlight and showed um, both our ambition but also uh, the authenticity in which we want to go around uh, these issues. And and we've done the same in oil and gas, where we've had um, a process to assess oil and gas majors' credible transition plans see how they align temperature wise and then take decisions on the relationships that we're going to have with those organizations in the long term of course we're committed to helping organizations that do have credible transition plans uh, to um, mobilizing their finance for renewables and uh, reducing the things that have uh, traditionally created carbon intensity and carbon heavy aspects of their of their industry. Many of these oil and gas businesses are going to be part of the solution as they pivot their skills and capabilities towards hydrogen and carbon capture and, uh, and renewables as well. So it's a, it's a really interesting space. Um, we have to be really uh, rigorous in terms of our evaluation um, and we have to be um, serious about the kind of partnerships we want to build uh, in these areas and make sure that we're working with the businesses of the future. And, and it's not just about doing the right thing, it's also uh, making sure that our customers are going to be uh, the ones that come out on top through this transition as well. And that's going to be good for our business and good for their business and good for the planet as well. We are um, signatories to the principles for responsible banking. So I see our role to be, as you say, quite fundamental um, in supporting the transition and supporting our customers. James has talked about our purpose and climate is a key part of our purpose-led strategy. Um, so bringing this all together and supporting our customers along their journey. Um, so we know where we are starting. We know 
we need to get the net zero as a collective, as a planet, as as an industry, and support our customers. And I think we all need to walk that that path to net zero together. And I see NatWest playing a key role in supporting our customers getting there. Um, and it'll happen gradually. It'll happen through conversations. It'll happen through education. It'll happen through us learning what products can support the customers. Then us working through those products and then supporting customers transition as well. So yes, I agree. We play a key part, um, and that's why we have been quite up front in terms of announcing our climate ambition, um, you know, the sponsorship of COP um, and the various initiatives that we are launching and the powerful partnerships we are building. So I think we're all on the right track. It's just, um, as I say, it's it's a journey, it's a path and, and we all have to work it together. So I think that's the process that's going on just now. James, obviously you are quite a key part in, in that path and kind of guiding light that we have. So it'll be great to get your thoughts as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think what's really exciting about this is uh, how people are engaging in it and how everybody sees this as a great learning opportunity and personal development uh, activity. Um, so we, we, we all have to work out uh, how we can contribute best and the impact that we can make as a result. Uh, and I think the environment that we've created for people to do that in this organization is second to none. Um, and uh, I find it you know, extremely motivating for somebody who's worked in this space for a very long time to see others picking up uh, on the topic and doing amazing work. And I feel as though it's a great privilege to be able to learn from them as well as to participate in our collective journey together. There's a great interest from employees. So every time I've paged a role, because obviously the climate teams have grown through this year, um, it's there's been excellent interest, um, and the level of passion that comes across in the interviews is amazing. Um, so everybody wants to be a part of the journey, um, and and I think it's a great opportunity to, to move us along. To help our people learn about climate change, we've entered into a really brilliant partnership with the University of Edinburgh and they've supported us in coming up with training and personal development materials that we've made easy to access uh, for people and enables them to get a certification that they've been part of those courses. Um, and uh, I think the, uh, the accessibility of that and the ability to participate in it is, um, is a great platform for people's personal growth and learning. And Edinburgh University, uh, you know, they're, they're you know, really uh, a leading university in climate change but they're also great educators as well as you can imagine so the combination of the two things is extremely powerful yeah and i think the great thing about that course in particular has been that we've tried to cover a broad range of people who are on the course so it's it's you know it's not about only those people who are currently involved in climate but you know starting from relationship managers to people who deal with customers to people who are probably working in it because all of us can learn uh, different things from that course and then implement measures that are within our control um, and what we can do and apply to our jobs to help the bank internally and obviously externally as well. So I think it's been quite a powerful tool in terms of education and learning and development, but also the course is practical. So you can bring things back to your desk because my main test with learning and development is what can you take, bring back to your desk? Because those are the things that stay with us um, and, and, and we can work on them and implement them. And I think that course has enabled us to do that quite a bit. Um, so I think there are lots of learning and development opportunities. Uh, James previously mentioned the Sustainable Futures Network as well, uh, where, which is uh, an employee-led network. Uh, and I have seen various invites with people volunteering from different areas to provide education and just give an insight into their world and how they are tackling um, the various issues around climate. So I think there's a lot of um, uh, resources available and obviously people should put their hand up uh, if they want to move more, etc. as well. So I think it's a very open culture um, and there's a lot of opportunities available is probably how I would sum up our learning and development offering. It's a huge challenge to address climate change at the pace and scale that we need to, to get to halving emissions globally by 2030 and uh, achieving the government's target of 78% reductions in emissions by 2035. And we can only do that by harnessing all of the forces that are available to us um, as effectively as possible. We need behaviour change and we can use our apps and our technology to nudge people towards that behavior change, give them the tools that they need to make those uh, behavior changes that are required. I'm sure there'll be some brilliant new technologies that will come 
uh, as a result of the innovation that's being put into addressing climate change. We, we saw some of those from some of the small businesses that we uh, bank up at the COP. Uh, and of course, we'll need the finance to come alongside that as well. So that we, we really need all forces working together uh, to support this change. And I'm sure you'll agree with that, Supriya. So it's it's a, it's a all hands on deck, right? So we all need to come together with all the tools that we have. I think behaviour change will play a massive role. And, and just, I think we need to think about each one of us can make a difference uh, because sometimes we think something really big needs to happen. There needs to be some big technology that needs to come in that will absorb all the carbon. And it's in all our hands to do small things and change small habits that will that will help us all collectively transition. And I think obviously MacWest will provide the tools and resources that we are providing to our customers to make those changes. Um, and then I, from what I hear and, and see, there's, as I said, it's not just a push, it's a pull as well. So there is a demand for these things and people use these. Um, and then collectively, hopefully there will be new technologies that help us and a lot of behavior change that happens. And, and we are providing the finance, um, as, as I mentioned with the various targets and, and ambitions that we have so i think it's 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 it'll all come together it's just we, we've sent it's a journey so let's walk along it